transportation, industries, or private properties. When we have equality, justice, and freedom, we are able to have a better community. Imagine living in a society without any restrictions. You can work hard and earn your own money. As well, you can vote who your leader is. Some examples of democratic governments are the Philippines, USA, and France. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Communist governments dominate much of the world for most of the time. The 20th century. About 82 million of the earth is communist. Communist education around the world is powerful and successful in many ways. For example, it is completely free. Communist countries have a lot to offer. Four of these are free plots of land, equal play, equal pay, equal health, and free health care, and mainly practicing Cuba free food for homeless every week. Good morning, honorable judges, the opposing team, students, and teachers. I am Don Padua, and I will be talking about the disadvantages of communism. I will also give examples and more impacts in regards to democracy. I strongly believe that democracy is better than communism because in a communist system, the central authority or the government dictates the means and quantity of production and places strict rules on businesses. This is the fact that all businesses and properties in a communist country are all owned by the communist government. In addition to this, Communism doesn't give the right of speech or right to vote for a government leader. What are some examples of democratic participation? Example is the freedom to vote. Voters may want to make changes to their community, such as building bigger schools or adding new roads. We can contact our government officials when we want to support or change our law. Voting in an election and contacting our elected officials are two ways that Americans can participate in their democracy. Another example is the freedoms of speech, association, assembly, religion, and movement. They are regarded as essential to a healthy, democratic, and strong civil society. A strong civil society develops when the public is encouraged to discuss and debate issues, when access to information and education is freely available, and when ordinary people are encouraged to be involved in community issues and local decision-making processes. Australians generally enjoy such freedoms within the bounds of laws. Good morning, my name is Dijon Daniels and I am going to be talking on behalf of Group 2. We will be talking about benefits of communism. Communism is a theory or social organization in which all property is owned by the community and each person contributes and receives according to their ability and need. Communism ensures that even the poorest of families will have food on their tables, always receive basic health care, and get quality education. In terms of jobs, this form of government promises everyone will have a job. My opponents, keep your ears open for this knowledge that I will give you. You may not have the freedom of choice for election, but everyone under communist rule will have everything they need, and everything is public, so that means less private property for less crime rates. Communism is a socio-economic and political system that aims to achieve a class of society. Communism is, communism is having a level playing field for all where no one is considered rich, poor, middle class. Everyone receives the some level of education opportunities and other forms of social recognition. Everyone, everyone is one society with one another and all receive quality education and basic health care. With 
private property, people can have things that may be illegal, but communist governments won't let that be. Communism was based on a motto that states, from each according to his abilities, to each according to his needs. The slogan arose from the idea that surplus production of goods and services in a communist society shall be able to serve every individual's needs equally. In a communist state, the commune members sh shared the full proceeds of their labor, as well as all the commune's dwellings and facilities among themselves. It aims to replace private property and profit-driven economies with public ownership. As a result, the community has control over the principal, principal means of production and the natural resources available. Therefore, it can be seen as a more advanced type of socialism. It is an economic and political ideology created in the second part of the 19th century by Karl Marx and Frederick Engels.